In the previous video we finished our little demo now we're gonna let's play this game for now okay so i'm pressing the letter okay i'm pressing forward backwards so i'm gonna shoot with the x and once you start shooting the game starts so let's Up gamepad controls, and this is the final part of the game development. Um, this is the GitHub repository where we have the code, so we finish already all the code that is inside of the HTML file right here in this index.html file. So, right now, we are gonna this is the final product as we saw in the previous video, and right now, we are gonna see. Now, we are gonna look at adding some uh, something extra support for the gamepad control via the gamepad api it brings a console like experience to your web uh, to your web games okay so the gamepad api gives you the ability to connect to a gamepad to your computer and and detect press buttons directly from the javascript code thanks to the browsers implementing such feature an api exposes all the information you need to hook up your game's logic and successfully control the user's interface and gameplay okay so if we go here into the main.js okay so api status browser and hardware support the gamepad api is still in working draft status although browser support is already quite good around 63 percent global coverage according to kenuse.com the list of supported devices is also quite extensive most popular gamepads are the e.g. Xbox 360 or the PS3 should be suitable for web implementation. Pure JavaScript approach. Let's think about implementing pure JavaScript gamepad controls in our little controls demo and pretty much they're talking about the, this example that we built in the previous video and this is the, get, the GitHub repository for that. So first to see how it would work first we need an event listener to listen for the connection of the new device so we have the window that at event listener and if we go here into the, our main.js uh, we're gonna go into the window okay so we already built this but if we go into the gamepad we have the window that at event listener and we are passing in the stream gamepad connected and as a second parameter the gamepad handler so this is exactly what we have here it's executed once so we can create some variables we will need later on for for storing the controller info and press button so again so we already build all the stuff and here we are having some let me see the 
okay so we have the controller so we have some we're using the let statement declaration we have this variable name controller and we are setting it to an empty cat an empty set of curly braces or just an empty object then we have the variable the let statement declaration name by on press and we are setting it to an empty and to empty brackets or just a, an empty array and now we have also a function name gamepad handler and we are passing in the the object handler or the event object handler whatever you want to call it and inside of the curly braces we have the con the yeah we have the controller so we have this variable we have the controller and we are setting it to the to the object handler that gamepad and then we have the output that text content and we are setting it to back ticks. and inside of the back ticks, we have the gamepad column dollar sign and inside of the curly braces we have the controller that id okay so the gamepad handler if we go here and we go into the gamepad handler okay okay so let me see okay so here we have the game let me see this is the gamepad handler uh, gamepad handler okay here okay in the project we use um, the var statement declaration so we use controller and button press as a global scope variables but here we have in this function here the game the gamepad handler okay so we have that the second line in the gamepad so the second line and the gamepad handler function shows up on the screen when the device is connected so if you would happen to have that device then you will have the this notice would appear 40 or something similar uh, 45e-28e wireless 360 controller so in my case i don't have that uh, so i don't ha so it doesn't appear it just shows the mouse and then x and y coordinates and let me see what else do we have here so we can also show the id of the device in the case above we are using the xbox 360 wireless controller to update the state of the gamepads currently press buttons we will need a function that will do exactly that on every frame and that is the reason that we have the gamepad update handler so let me see what is the gamepad update okay gamepad update handler so we have the second function here and okay so again inside of the curly braces we have this the the button press and we are setting it to an empty an empty array and then we have the if statement declaration so if the controller that buttons then we're gonna have a, a for loop and inside of the for loop inside of the parentheses of the for loop we are going to have this variable b be initialized to zero and as long as b is less than the controller that buttons that length we are going to increment the variable b by one okay and b is a here is a let statement declaration okay so it's not a constant so i can change obviously um okay so inside of the curly braces of the for statement we're gonna have an if statement so and the condition is gonna be if the controller that buttons and we're gonna pass in the variable b as the index array and then we're gonna chain it to the pressed okay if that is true then we're gonna have the buttons press that push and we're gonna pass in the variable b so that is what we have we first reset the buttons press array to get it ready to store the latest info we'll write it from the current frame then if the buttons are available we loop through them if the pressed property is set to true then we add into the buttons press array for later processing next we will consider the gamepad buttons press handler function so we're gonna go uh, game buttons press handler okay this is the function gamepad button press handler okay and again we are passing this variable we're passing button and inside of the curly braces we have a let statement declaration name press we are setting it to false the boolean false 
we have the for loop so we have this variable i initialized to zero we have this condition as long as the variable i is less than the buttons press that length we are going to increment the variable i by one and inside of the for loop we are going to have the inside of the curly braces of the for loop we're going to have an if statement so if the buttons press and we're going to pass in the the index of the variable i okay if the buttons press and we're passing the the index array i uh, if that is equal to the button then we are going to have in the press we're going to have in this variable here press we're going to set it to true okay that is if we are going to be outside of the for loop statement and then we are going to return this variable press and this is exactly what we did here the only thing we change the we change the the let statement declaration by a var statement declaration a, a scope variable okay a global scope variable now the function takes a button as a parameter and the loop it checks if the given buttons number is among the currently pressed buttons available in the buttons press array if it is then the function returns true false otherwise next in the draw function we do two things so now we're going to go into the draw function let me see okay so here we're going to be in the draw function and okay we're going to do two things execute the gamepad update handler function to get the current state of press buttons on every frame and use the gamepad buttons press handler function to check the buttons we are interested to see whether they are pressed and do something if they are so again let me see yeah so we have this function name draw and inside of the function inside of the curly braces we are going to have the ctx uh, and the method is going to be clear rec so we're going to have ctx that clear rectangle and we're going to pass in some parameters we're going to pass in the number zero zero we're going to pass in the the parameter canvas the width and the canvas the height we're gonna have some more code as, uh, well yeah we're gonna have an if statement so we're gonna have if right press then we're gonna have the player x uh, addition assignment operator 5 okay so we have that uh, we're gonna have the game uh, the game update handler so let me see game update handler again we're gonna have some if else statement if okay so if the game pad button press handler and this time we're passing zero then we're gonna have the player y uh, subtraction addition subtraction operator set, uh, set to five okay so we have that and then we're gonna have an else if so we're gonna have the gamepad buttons press handler and this time we're gonna pass in one curly braces and now we're gonna have the player y addition assignment operator set to five okay then we're gonna have some if else statement so this is pretty much the same and finally we're gonna have an if statement so if the gamepad button press handler and we're passing 11 then we're gonna have we're gonna show an alert that is gonna be boom okay no so then we're gonna have the ctx draw image and we're gonna pass in the image the player x and the player y and finally let me see this is exactly what we have right here and finally we're gonna have the request animation frame and below we're just gonna be calling the functions as typing draw parentheses and then semicolon so that's pretty much what we have.